Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the greatest era of action movies. Melissa's watching me do that like <laughs> in person as I'm doing that open. The best part is he does all the actions of the words. <laughs> I, he punches, I, I'm he, he totally he chops, imagining and he kicks. it. Yeah. <laughs> we are back for season two. I know it's been a long time since we last spoke to everyone and we are happy that you're Come back in and listen to the next season of the movie podcast. We are excited to bring you what our new theme is going to be and the slate of movies. Unlike last time, you know, where we didn't have a theme and we didn't have a slate of movies, so we didn't announce them ahead of time. <laughs> well, so it was completely different, but anyway. <laughs> we stumbled on a theme eventually. <laughs> <laughs> So in case you forgot and you're like looking at your phone and you're you like, see a podcast, the you're like, what the hell is this podcast? <laughs> and why do they, uh, why did I have a new episode after months of nothing? This podcast after Miami Vice, we switched to do movies, action movies, the greatest era of action movies, whatever era we say are the greatest era. It might change. It's somewhere between, I don't know, 1950 and like 2020. <laughs> <laughs> But we're going to bring you along in what we think are great action movies. Now, there's a difference between the diehards, which are great action movies, some of the best movies ever made, but then also the movies that we love to watch that are fun and exciting, a little cheesy, a little corny, easy to set jokes to. <laughs> Those are the ones that we also love. Lots of movies I saw are Billy Blanks fit that category. Also Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We just love to have a great time. Watch action movies that are, for lack of a better term, like, you know, candy, candy action. <laughs> they just taste good. They're bad for you, but you just can't hey, get enough of them. Who needs a plot when you can blow a bunch of stuff up and fight ninjas? <laughs> can you punch a snake right in the face? We gotcha. <laughs> so we just love to have a lot of fun. And where we left off last season was we were saying, when we come back, we're going to have an official theme for the season we're going to announce our list of movies ahead of time that way everyone knows what to watch what to get ready for what to watch and then you can watch along with us and we'll just set the whole season to be this theme and then every season we will reset the theme to be something different and that's going to get me just straight into talking about our theme that we chose for this season and we talked about a lot of different stuff and if you were paid attention to the feed last week you got our behind the scenes look of what it takes for us to do our planning which you know actually is most the time us just messing around talking about Sylvester Stallone body parts that were seen in Demolition Man <laughs> <laughs> or potentially could be seen in the extra 40 minutes of Event Horizon. Yes, I'm still looking for it, by the way. <laughs> the extra body part or the... <laughs> well, no. That does not put well for poor Sam. <laughs> Magnifying glass. I don't see it. It's not there. <laughs> if you listen to that episode last week, you actually already know our theme. And if you didn't listen to it, like, I thought we were cool, man. Yeah. Like, come on. No. <laughs> Why are we doing this if you're not listening? <laughs> I want to toss out some of the other themes that we had discussed that we decided to pass on and not permanently. No. But oh, just no. We're for coming back season. to those. <laughs> yeah. And John, yeah. for sure, the one that we talked about the most, which we thought was a slam dunk for the season, but then we took a sudden left turn, <laughs> was the one that you had come to the table with. Yeah, so I, I wanted to do the movies that were made up based on video games, because that was like huge in the 90s when I was growing up. We had Street Fighter and Double Dragon. And these were all like Nintendo and Sega games that we played growing up. So I thought like that would be perfect. But, I also um, like that idea because sorry. in a lot of cases, there's these, they had like TV shows that all like animated TV shows that went along with them. Yeah. Too. And they were just as mm -hmm. terrible as the original movie. <laughs> <laughs> they never improved. Yeah. It was great. No. So yeah, that was still during the era of like Saturday morning cartoons. Not saying that we've given up on that one completely. That one will come back around just like the theme that uh, Wilson and I had talked about a bunch, which is movies starring rappers. Action movies starring rappers as like sidekicks. <laughs> <laughs> really? Come on. They're like sidekicks, right? <laughs> yeah. Like the Steven Seagal DMX one, Exit Wounds, and mm -hmm. uh, what's the one with Tupac? in Steven Seagal. Oh, man. Oh. What is that one called? I'm drawing a total blank now on the name of that movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. But it, it's there. It is. Is that, 
it's no gang related is the one with Tupac and Jim Belushi. Oh, maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Well, have you just... seen Steven Seagal lately? Like he's he could be confused with Belushi. <laughs> Ouch. There is so many great movies with rappers and the action movies because it's just because of what we've seen with Ice T. Okay, set your expectations. Know that the action the action part is probably going to be pretty okay. Writing may not fit best for the actors that are on screen. <laughs> <laughs> So we talked about that one, and there's a whole host of other stuff that we had debated and we had thought about. I think one of the abstract ones I threw out there was another was again with the animated cartoon show. So it was yep. like action movies that had an inappropriate animated show, so like Robocop or Rambo mm -hmm. in the nineties, where they had like kids shows. They were animated kids shows, Robocop, but the then you watch the actual Robocop movie and go, This is not a child's movie. How can these two be put together? Yeah, like exactly. Robocop the uh -huh. cartoon was weird anyway. Like <laughs> I know that we will come back to those themes eventually, but we did settle on a fantastic theme that actually feeds right into another amazing theme. And this theme for season two of Go With the Heat podcast is best ninjas. <laughs> Sorry, best, I got excited. <laughs> best ninja city. Which which city has the best karate, kung fu, martial arts? Which is the place that will defend the honor of their hometown to show who kicks the most ass? <laughs> who that... can punch, <laughs> kick, and chop their way yes. <laughs> to victory? <laughs> Well, and it makes so much sense. The 80s and 90s action movies were all full of ninjas, and there were so many movies. My dojo versus your dojo. It fits so well with the types of movies that we, that we love. There's like some low-hanging fruit that we could have chosen, but like we mentioned, we wanted things that are kind of fun, a little cheesy, maybe not the best, but they're still a lot of fun to watch. We also wanted to pick movies where there were some of them that we had seen, and where I'm going to come back to our recurring joke that made us think of this theme. But we also knew that there's a lot of underserved movies that kind of fit this category too, where there's actors that maybe don't get the, the treatment that they deserve. Exactly. And we're going to do that for them. <laughs> <laughs> we did think of this theme, and John hit the nail on the head when we were talking about it, which is we talk a lot about Seattle karate. Because uh, Seattle karate is supposed to be the best. <laughs> I said supposed to. <laughs> we don't know if it's true anymore. Everything we believed has been shaken up. <laughs> Knowing that after seeing the, the power, the raw power of Seattle karate, that what other cities are out there and who can who is capable of defeating seattle karate the list is very short and that's why we couldn't go with <laughs> karate kid or no 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 no, no. no. Karate no. kid could not handle <laughs> <laughs> seattle no. karate <laughs> i mean the, he, the karate kid is not even on the same level as some of these karate experts we're going to be talking about in these movies and that's a key point here they all that they actual have karate real experts kar in them. Yes, exactly. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. No retreat. <laughs> I mean, it does have one, but I mean, Bruce Lee's ghost. It's not really Bruce Lee, just for everyone. But. <laughs> so that obviously non-union affiliate. <laughs> obviously, our first choice is no retreat, no surrender. That will for sure be an episode yes. of the Go With The Heat yes. podcast because it is Seattle Karate. Because it is so amazing with the ghost of Bruce Lee that comes to train him. With the man being homeless after getting in a fight with his daddy. With him <laughs> yeah. doing a weird crunches in between two bars with a man sitting on his lap eating ice cream. Yeah, There's uh, that, yes. The original JCVD splits on uh -huh. the ropes. He's a villain, people. Uh -huh. A villain. With, with glorious yeah. oh, makeup. And that will yes. come up. <laughs> That will come up later when we go to compare movies. Is that they, Seattle Karate defeats JCVD? I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, that's so, true. But Seattle Karate, it, it's it was such a sure thing. We didn't even put another movie up against it. <laughs> 
just pass it. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's the same thing. We didn't put in another movie. Well, kind for the most part, there was a couple other Miami movies, but for sure, no, no, no. In this, we are going to talk about Miami Connection. There was no other Miami movie. Yes. No, well, Miami Connection's honor- it. <laughs> honorable mention to only the strong. Maybe we will come back to that later. But yes, Miami Connection was the hands down pick for Miami. Only the strong was the one with the guy from Iron Chef, right? I believe. Yes. Yeah, I believe yes. that's the one. I mean, that's a strong. We're going to go back to that. Yes. <laughs> because of his message it, it's of positivity. Just... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how, how can you not want to see the Iron Chef fight? Like, if you've ever watched the Iron Chef, like, I know he can cook. I want to see him fight now. <laughs> how dangerous is he with those knives? <laughs> I, I remember reading about that movie and seeing, like, it's legit. Like, like the guy that he's, he's the host of the Iron Chef. Uh-huh. But so, also, it's a movie about positivity. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Which, which mm-hmm. it's the same thing with Miami Connection. But uh, Miami what Connection is, about- is about friendship, okay? <laughs> friendship. <laughs> friends, they're in a band. They do karate together. They're loyal. <laughs> Loyalty, friendship. <laughs> what is a better... Con- what? What kind of message are we going to send out with that? That's an amazing message. Nothing gets more positive than that. I don't care about Iron Chef and his positivity. You know? Here's what we know for sure. There's a significant chance that once groups are allowed to reassemble again after this whole like virus thing. Kind you know, of, nothing. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Thing, yeah. We are for sure starting a tribute band to Dragon Sound. Yes, we are. Also, yes. just a side note, John is actually in Miami Connection. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yes, apparently. <laughs> He's the leader of the bad ninjas. <laughs> that would have won if it wasn't for those dang kids. <laughs> so now for the, the one that might have a little bit of a debate, and that's Melissa. We go to you because you are a resident JCVD expert. What there is no debate. Let's get that straight. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. No. There are a ton, ton of JCVD movies yes, that we are. could have gone with. And I've seen them all. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. I mean <laughs> all five of the kickboxers. We I mean, we watched that one where he was a DNA clone of himself as a serial killer. <laughs> It was an amazing movie, by the way. I got really into it. I Dominic was like, I don't know what's going today. on. I'm like, I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> it's good. Watch it. <laughs> I mean, it's got. I was going through Prime and I was like, hey, what's this? Yeah. Well, I watched it. It's got um, Yondu in it. <laughs> he doesn't have a name. It, I just call it, him that now. <laughs> I almost watched it because I just watched Will Smith's Gemini Man, which is basically the know. same thing. Ah, oh, gotcha. <laughs> That's that new one. Oh, new it's movie. a new one. Okay, gotcha. Okay, anyway, it's so the yes, new there's, one. Yeah. there's a debate now. So what's the debate? <laughs> well, the debate, really the debate comes down to is what JCVD movie to pick. And mind you with the theme. The theme is, is that you're here to defend your, your honor, your city. And there's, you know, Time Cop, Cyborg. That's not really karate based. There's some other, like a kickboxer for sure. But there's one, if we're going to get everyone together into one tournament. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have them all defend their style. There's only one JCVD movie that fits that. Bloodsport. Because it's Frank Dukes. He's a real person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. actually, and well, he okay. represents Canada. So exactly. I'm totally down with that. He's from Being Toronto. With a Canadian winning the whole tournament. <laughs> yep. I mean, there's some stories about Frank Dukes that may or may not be true. But we won't go into those. <laughs> <laughs> he's we also like he, he's he, he apparently he's the best at everything he's ever done like mm. he's the best pickler he's the best <laughs> sandwich eater he's the, I mean, again like, we may we, we may actually go into those but <laughs> we'll get we'll leave those for the actual podcast for that movie i just I know people have talked about blood sport before, but what I'm really excited for is a give Melissa a chance, you know, to gush over JCVD. He they show his butt. <laughs> That's really why I picked that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really excited to talk about the different types of yeah, that, the different- fighting that are in it, including monkey style, which is not racist. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes. Also, that big guy that just crushes people. What, what kind of style is that? He just squeezes everyone's eyeballs out. <laughs> no, but really, no. all jokes aside, it is a really good movie to showcase all the different types of martial arts. And, of course, JCBD is the best, so <laughs> he comes out on top. And you see his ass, so what could be better? <laughs> well, and it allows us to represent Toronto, Canada, so... 
we will be giving our Canadian friends up north some representation. Hey, they're underserved you know, okay. in the martial arts community. Where do you hear about them? <laughs> <laughs> So on to our next one that has a little bit of a debate to it, too. And that's who is going to represent the city of New York. And there are a ton of options to talk about for the city of New York. I know that we had picked out some. And to be honest with you, we really only see the surface for the amount of martial arts movies that can represent that city. Oh, yeah. And there's all different types. There's undercover cop martial art movies, gang war, gangs versus gangs. I mean, just The Warriors alone is a, literally a movie of different ridiculous gangs kung fu fighting. So, like, there's so much that could represent New York. I mean, I thought Blood Moon's another movie that, that kind of it's outside of what we were kind of looking for. But I think ultimately we, we kind of settled on The Last Dragon. Yeah. I think is... I don't know how we don't do The Last Dragon. Now, for a little bit, I was on the fence about Rumble on the Bronx because it would be so great to have a Jackie Chan movie. And the unfortunate mm -hmm. part is that there are a bunch of great Jackie Chan movies that can represent other cities, including The Drunken Master, uh, especially mm -hmm. Drunken Master 2. Um, and there's a couple other ones where we could have chose him. But his movies are almost impossible to find. When I was looking through movies, I was trying to avoid getting too far into the whole full-on kung fu genre. I was trying to stay in more of an action genre. It would have been great to get a Jackie Chan movie in this competition. And I think for our next theme, which we haven't announced yet, we'll do at the end of the um, movie breakdown. But one of the other potential themes that we have, Jackie Chan will for sure fit into that. So I think we will be able to come back to Jackie Chan. I don't think there's any way we couldn't have picked The Last Dragon, though, because it's straight up New York style. Two, mm -hmm. it's the whole thing takes place in the, in the city. Mm hmm. Three, mm -hmm. his family's against it. I, yes. The music, too. There's music that's really good in that movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to do it for Shogun alone. Shown up. It is 100% for Shown up. Yes, Bruce Leroy is great. Yes, everything else about it is great. But Shown up. Oh, yeah. They throw that guy in the trash can at that. <laughs> 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 they're the weirdest gangsters in all of New York. It's like they were taken out of the Warriors. Like they were there, a gang in the Warriors that happened to survive. They won. <laughs> <laughs> they were the ones that were left. Which, which technically, if you've ever seen the Warriors, you would believe. Because uh, I would believe that show enough, beat the hell out of the guys on the roller skates. Oh, or, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, did you see some of those gangs? Wasn't there like a clown gang? Yeah, there was like a mime game. Those baseball guys. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god, the baseball. Yeah. Game oh come on. Cool, but... Like, like show enough. It's gonna beat the hell out of some mimes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about that movie is great, including a great one of the great moments in my life where I went to go see The Room at the Alamo Draft House mm -hmm. out here in Phoenix, and at the same time they were doing a tribute throwback the same night for The Last Dragon. And the actor who played Bruce Leroy was there. And I got a chance to like, oh. I mean, it was, it was, you know, I was kind of fanning and also <laughs> like, um, starstruck, too, star, starstruck is too nervous. So I kind of waved at him and just said hi. And then like, didn't do anything else. So <laughs> missed and giggle, you giggle. <laughs> I, <touch> you. <laughs> I saw you in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst timing ever because at the room showing, was one of the people well, there was an actor who was in the room that was also there yeah so too. you were torn you were so, you were like i didn't know they were on the same night <laughs> <laughs> one of the ones that doesn't need much debate is our other international entry so we got one from canada so we figure we got one from canada why not one from france <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's from the french canadian side toronto for frank dukes so why not someone like legitimately from france well i guess I guess JCVD's near, and that's always used that as a story for him when he's in yeah, America. True. Like, why do you live in New Orleans, JCVD? Well, my parents, they're from France, and they bring me <laughs> to America. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I have this weird accent, even though I live in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> So this one, is it's in L.A., but it's not L.A. because we're going to come back to L.A. So it's not representing L.A. No, 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 no. No, this one is representing <laughs> no. France. The whole city of France. <laughs> I was like, in my head, like, that's not a city. That's a country. So, 
So it's called Angel Town. It's about a French foreign exchange student who protects a family from L.A. gangs, Kung Fu gangs. So <laughs> okay. it's a, like you said, representing the entire country of France. <laughs> Also, he looks like he's kind of old to be a foreign exchange student, but <laughs> I guess we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> With Angel Town, too, and I mean, let's be honest, not only does he represent France, he kind of represents Europe in all of this, because we have a Canadian <laughs> one, we have a bunch of American ones, and then we have our French foreign exchange students, so he's kind of carrying all of Europe on his back, so hopefully he's and all pretty of impressive against these these gangs, yes. <laughs> I just love, I so love like the 80s and into the early 90s when roving gangs of kung fu artists were a pro major problem I in every they, major city. I grew up thinking ninjas were going to be a real problem. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Like, I, I thought everyone was going to have to do karate. Like, <laughs> we don't need it though. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. Kind of disappointed. I've never been attacked by a ninja. <laughs> I mean, I don't think any of them are ninjas. Hey, maybe if we had, if the ninjas were around still, we wouldn't have this virus. Maybe they could punch and kick it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so we also have a couple choices for Vegas. We picked out a couple of movies for Vegas. and Because Vegas is known for their karate. <laughs> well, I'm sure they are now with all them suburban kids that just do nothing but go to karate class. That's true. <laughs> well, and, and with all of the MMA now, because like UFC is based in las vegas like that's that's all it, it basically vegas is just half people wanting to trying to get into the ufc so it's just a bunch of meatheads in a gym um, uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know i take offense to that my brother teaches mma now <laughs> in, where where does he I teach this mma my yeah, in, in las vegas because he lives in vegas yeah. <laughs> I stand yeah. by my yeah, statement. Exactly. And both my nephews <laughs> yes. do it. Yeah. Both my nephews do MMA and they're both like yeah, they're like super into it. And my Just brother's a bunch does. of beatheads. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they're very much involved in this tournament. And we almost went with the movie Blood Match in from ninety one, uh, to represent these meatheads with a main character <laughs> named Brick. Brick Bardo. <laughs> I mean, why aren't we going with that again? <laughs> well, because Brick Bardo was on a mission to find out which of the five greatest kickboxers <laughs> killed his brother. I'm trying to blink. I think we watched that movie. That's why That's why it's like it's all coming together for me. I'm like, wait a minute. Did we watch this movie? John, all I know is we keep hearing all these stories about brothers trying to get revenge for another dead brother. You guys can't go in to be doing like karate. Don't go take karate lessons. <laughs> I guess, the, <laughs> I guess the real debate is, is which one of us dies and which one of us one of us is trying to get revenge <laughs> against well, my brother. I think I'm, <laughs> I'm the, I'm, <laughs> the, yes. the MMA meathead. <laughs> He's one of those see, people that well, they have see, to figure that, out. That who's settles it then. <laughs> Dominic's the one that has to die. <laughs> so why would I be fighting your brother? It makes no sense. <laughs> So, but we ended up instead of that, we ended <laughs> up different direction. going with for Vegas, we ended up going with Deadly Bet. Deadly Bet is a kickboxer who fights for his girlfriend, Charlene Tilton, and for his life against crime boss in a Las Vegas kickboxing tournament. And it stars Jeff Wincott, who is a Canadian actor and martial artist. He did a bunch of, of martial arts movies like Night Heat and uh uh top cops so <laughs> uh we get a little bit more canadian representation but this is from a true canadian martial artist proving that canadians too can fight <laughs> you know if we also think about when we're choosing the vegas movie it's got it's got bet in the name it's deadly bet like how do we choose it's any also, other it's also got steven vincent lee uh lay in it he's been in a bunch of kung fu movies like ring of fire and sword of honor like so he's like a veteran to be the best we now have coverage for miami seattle toronto new york vegas and France. <laughs> France. All of Europe. 
He represents everybody. <laughs> so now let's talk about the real debate. Who is going to represent the city of Los Angeles? Because there's a lot of choices. Yeah. So, and it, it's, it's clearly it's only one choice is Black Belt Jones. <laughs> right? I mean... Am I alone? I I really want to pick that movie because it's <laughs> that that like the way he looks like in his character and stuff is used in a bunch of other movies. It feels like anything Bruce Lee or Bruce Lee related is probably a little too serious for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's a ghost, <laughs> <laughs> but not really him. <laughs> <laughs> so an another option right. we have this is where Seagal comes in is that we could do hard to kill I mean why aren't we yeah. doing hard to kill <laughs> I, I just I think it's more of a cop movie than yeah than kind of our martial arts theme so I, I agree just, I think it's just that side of it too many guns it's not enough roddy chopping <laughs> yes exactly so we now if he was a cook <laughs> <laughs> I pitched that one and Dominic was like no because like, oh. that's in Alaska like, where else are you going to get? Where do you got karate guys to do it in Alaska? <laughs> Saying bears. No, <laughs> Grizzly bears. So. <laughs> That's all there is in Alaska, right? Grizzly bears. So. <laughs> so we did pick a winner. And we have a winner for LA. And there's, there's so many choices. There's so many other great choices. So that's not to say this is the best LA karate movie or best LA martial arts movie. This is just the one that we chose. So hold your hate mail. Yeah, okay. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have yes. one that we really, really want to talk about. And that is Blood Fist. And I'm going to say it's for two reasons. Billy Blanks. <laughs> Billy motherfucking <laughs> Blanks is in this movie. That's all I care about yes. is Billy Blanks. Yep. <laughs> so, and to give you the lowdown, Billy Blanks is an L.A. sensei who goes to Manila and lays a whoop. A whooping, and I believe it's another revenge movie. So I mean, uh, could <laughs> all also these be... people want is revenge. <laughs> I think in Blood Fist was he one of the side people? Yes, he's one of the side people. So he's one of the people that the main character has to defeat in order to get That's to right. Don Wilson. Okay, we're also... not talking about Don the Dragon Wilson, are we? Yeah, we're talking about he Don is... the Dragon yes. Wilson. He's oh, got yes. so many championships, like in real life. Like there is actually nobody <laughs> in real life that compares to him. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, guys, he is avenging. Guess what? His brother. His brother. <laughs> his he's, he's avenging his brother. It's <laughs> always the brothers. <laughs> His brother's sister's girlfriend who was there and saw no, <laughs> who saw his cat. No, I mean, we all can't be JCBD raising someone else's raising your brother's kid. Oh yeah, because he's an honorable man, okay? <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows how they're related? I mean, technically I mean, <laughs> technically in Bloodsport, he's going to avenge his best friend who's like his brother's dad <laughs> to prove to his sensei. <laughs> that he can do it so that's kind of like his brother right i mean and in kickboxer he does avenge his brother <laughs> <laughs> okay so we have just a recap here we got miami with miami connection we got seattle with no treat no retreat no surrender we got toronto blood sport new york Lo the last dragon la blood fist deadly bet las vegas Angel Town, Prince. <laughs> we don't know which region he's from, okay? <laughs> maybe we'll learn it. So we've never seen gonna, Angel Town. Yeah, so maybe we'll it, learn so it in the movie. Yes. I doubt it, but. <laughs> Listen, karate can only be real karate if it's from the karate region of France. Otherwise, it's just sparkling karate. <laughs> yeah. So let's get to our final selection here because we got eight movies, and it really comes down to. What do we do about Chuck? You can, you have to include Chuck in karate. He is a karate god, also a god of mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And pants up to your nipples. Uh, You've yeah. seen the old movies. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I think there's something wrong with his crotch to <laughs> leg ratio, but <laughs> we can talk about that later. <laughs> so Chuck Norris has been in a billion movies. Lots and lots and lots of movies. He is in so many movies. And so we're trying to narrow down what fits our theme. So he represents the city. And then also is in this era that we really like of action movies. Like, okay, maybe it's more recent stuff. Is it the best? And the stuff from the 70s. He's got that weird haircut. I still like the look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I still like the way you look. <laughs> so we settled down to two movies. And we have two options. In, in the two options, it's 
either A, we double up on a city, or B, we go with a different city. Side note, though, before we mm. do this. Technically, in the Octagon, I don't think he's from L.A. So the two points that we have to, to debate here is first movie, the Octagon, which, of course, has ninjas. ninjas. I thought they were gone. Ninjas. But they're still here, obviously. <laughs> How did they come back? Ninjas. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it really is the whole movie. <laughs> We've just given you the movie, <laughs> the plot. <laughs> you got that? Or, because that's got legit ninjas in it. He's got to fight legit ninjas. A, a ninja gang. He's got to fight them off. Or B, we can go with Lone Wolf McQuaid. Which has him and uh kung fu legend david carradine which is outside of our theme true like sorry it's sorry it's it's kind of outside of our theme and we're kind of in he could represent the, the the fantastic city the most amazing city what about of El Paso. forced vengeance what about forced oh, vengeance that's right because that's the san francisco one of a hong kong casino kicks a part of a crime gang to avenge his boss oh yeah i know that's the other one i'm thinking of the one from san francisco it's a tough decision i don't know because we're like but ninjas or do we do it as a city because we can totally double up and give la a shooting chance here and give them two movies or b go with el paso that lone wolf would re represent the city of el paso and he doesn't need any reasons why because he's chuck norris he's and he just a, does whatever he wants he's a to. texas ranger in that you know like walker texas ranger <laughs> Uh. Just saying that's where it came from. <laughs> Knowing that Walker, Texas Ranger is supposed to be Lone Wolf I mean, McQuaid that has grown up. And David Carradine's in it. And that scene with Haley Joel Osment where he says, <laughs> I got AIDS. That puts that scene in totally different context. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They told me I've got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so like everyone close your eyes and just blurt out the movie that you think we should do for chuck norris on the count of three ready one I, I'm not ready john's yet. gonna blurt out something else <laughs> <laughs> just go there's with so one. many of them K9. no i'm just kidding. what's the other one where he's like top the dog, dog. <laughs> yeah top dog there you go <laughs> Did the dog well, do also, <laughs> There's also an eye for an eye where he quits the police force to avenge his partner, which is also San Francisco. That's what I'm saying. But they're all not they're not karate. They're like he's a cop. If we're trying to do yeah. like where he does karate, the like the picture for him is him and Gary David Carradine like on a ranch doing karate. <laughs> Everyone, look into your heart and say out loud on the count of three what your movie is for Chuck Norris. Ready? One, two, three. Lone Top Wolf dog. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, let's do. Top let's go with, let's go with Lone Wolf McQuaid. Expendables. No, Silent <laughs> Rage. <laughs> We're all going to come up with different ones. <laughs> Missing in action. You can do any of those. But, mm -hmm. but that's not karate. That's military. Yeah, military. No, I think we go with Lone Wolf. We we turn a blind eye to like it's not you know he's not representing a dojo or something like he's that. He's representing El Paso. <laughs> yeah, he's he representing don't... Texas. He don't need no dojo. <laughs> they have dojos in El Paso. <laughs> they do it out on their ranch with their cattle. <laughs> There's no way that we could do this without a Chuck Norris he and B be without there. representation from the great state of Texas. Also France. <laughs> 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 we don't know which region. I think he's going to carry a baguette and have a beret on, but <laughs> when he arrives in L.A. <laughs> so those are our movies. Those are the ones that we chose to eight. They're not the eight best karate movies. They're not the eight. Um, they not be your choice for the eight cities or the eight movies that you would select. But these are the ones that we have chosen and we don't care what you think. Uh, excuse me. If you don't think that Bloodsport is not the best karate movie, I will fight you right now. <laughs> I don't need to. I don't have to know uh, karate. <laughs> on a side note, I want to say we did discuss picking a movie from Hong Kong or Tokyo or some of the other areas, but there's just so so many kung fu movies just out of like Hong Kong. Like it was mm -hmm. just impossible to dive into that. That's why we tried to avoid. That's why we didn't do like Game of Death. Well, we did talk about what well, might be our next theme, but it could, it could be later. We might come back to it at some point in time. But either way, a definite theme in the future is best karate style. Yes. And that's when I think yes. Hong Kong will come in and the kung fu movies is because 
they will represent that type of fighting. And I think that's also why we pass on more modern movies, like say a sci-fi movie like Equilibrium. Well, that's a sci-fi movie. That's why we <laughs> passed on that. <laughs> because we can take, in that theme, we'll take things like Ninjutsu and... Jim Cotta. <laughs> Jim Cotta and <laughs> Gunjutsu <laughs> and all these other ones yes. that will pit them against each other for the best style. And Hamster. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing beats hamster style. Nothing beats hamster style. Damn, I, I don't mean, want to do hamster style anymore. Maybe mouse or gerbil, okay. but definitely nothing beats hamster. <laughs> so, just to recap, these are our movies. We have Miami Connection, No Retreat, No Surrender, Bloodsport, The Last Dragon, Blood Fist, Deadly Bet, Angel Town, and Lone Wolf McQuaid. Keep it tuned, not just to this podcast, but to the website, GoWithTheHeat.com. I will publish on there, at some point, I will publish on there the list of movies, this list of movies, and the dates that we'll be talking about them. We want your feedback. We want your input. We want your hot takes on the movies. We want you to watch them along with us. That's why we're publishing them ahead of time. Knowing that at this date, we're going to talk about this movie. You can watch it. Get your hands on it. Watch it in preparation. And then we'll be with us and listen to our podcast and chat with us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and email. Go with the heat at gmail.com. All those ways you can talk to us about what, why you loved that movie, what you loved about it. And maybe when we get to the end, helping us determine what is the greatest city for karate. Who is going to dethrone Seattle as the greatest city of karate in the country? <laughs> in France. <laughs> France is going to dethrone them. We want your involvement in this. We want you to email us. We want you to tweet at us. We want you to get us on Instagram. We want your involvement in this. And we want to talk about this as a group. What are the best cities for this? Like we said, we didn't cover every city. There are other movies that could represent different cities or the same cities that we chose. We don't care about those. <laughs> this is just a list that we wanted to go with. These are the movies that we wanted to talk about. We could obviously come back to this later and do like a round two if we wanted to for other movies for, from other cities. But this is what we chose for this one. As I yeah, I would love to find a kung fu movie based in like Australia or New Zealand or something. <laughs> so like you guys have some movies that we maybe missed. Please send those to us as well. Absolutely. Email us. Go with the heat at gmail.com. Get us on Twitter at go with the heat. Instagram at go with the heat. Facebook. Go with the heat. <laughs> That's where we are on all of these places. You can find us. Check out that website, goldtea.com. You can find all the ways to contact us. You can find all the ways to contact us individually. You can follow us on Twitter. You can find a ways to get that. You can also find a ways to subscribe. We are on basically every platform that has ever existed. You want to get us on Pocket Cast or Radio Public or Overcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're there. Tune in? Yeah, we got you. Google Podcasts? Yep. Apple Podcasts? Yep. Spotify? absolutely <laughs> we're on spotify <laughs> you can find all the places you can subscribe to us including youtube that's gonna do it for us this week we're gonna be back in two weeks with our first movie so make sure to check out follow us and find out what that first movie is gonna be we will see you soon that's gonna do it for us this week we hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll see y'all next time bye pals